Hello, my beautiful people, and welcome to your channel message reading. This is the Dream Clairvoyant. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're doing well, feeling safe, and feeling blessed because you are. So let's go ahead and see what your channel's message reading is. All right. All right. You have number 11. That's the broom and the whip. Okay. You have 25, which is the... This is the ring card. It's all about contracts. Um, does I say contracts? Oh, well, it could be. But the ring card is all about commitments, loyalty, commitments. Um, you know, it could represent joint ventures and partnerships and, you know, all that good stuff. Let me see here. Hmm. Then you have lady number one. Lady number one is like the queen of cups. She appears to be very content, you know. Let me see here, 32 is the moon. What's going on here? 43, trial and error. Hmm. The moon represents things that are hidden. Many times when you see the moon, um, many times when you see the moon, it's like saying, hey, something's hidden. So use your intuition or even greater, use your discernment to uncover what it is that is hidden okay what's hidden here could it be that someone's like is someone competing for a woman right because the broom is conflict and strife and it represents um <laughs> the broom is the broom and the whip represents conflict and strife right uh so could there be some sort of competition could could there be some sort of conflict over you know committing to a woman you know uh is there competition is there a woman here who has like several suitors yeah it looks like it number 10 is the sword or the scythe that's a big yes card it's a big it's a big truth and clarity card is what the scythe represents let me see here the scythe could also represent um danger okay but of course, it's a sword. And many times in tarot, swords represents the truth, clarity, confirmation. It's a big yes card, very similar to the ace of swords. So that's how I like to read the scythe card. Um, hmm. I feel like there I feel like there's some tension, especially looking here at the at the cross. The cross represents burden and pain and you know grief, stress. I think there's a there's someone competing over a woman. Let me see. Number seven is the snake. The snake is a betrayal, backstabbing. Someone here is being sneaky when you see the snake. And then number one is the messenger card, communication. Here's a man. This man here is showing up as gentleman number one, or gentleman number two, excuse me. He he sort of reminds me of the king of wands. Just look at how passionate you know he looks, ambitious, right? Like he has desires. Um, What is this competition about? Like, yeah, there's a man. It's between two people. There's two men here. And then look, the, the two dice. Hmm. Gentleman number two, king of wands. Lady number one, queen of cups. Then you have uh, gentleman number one. Okay. These are both gentleman cards, but one is gentleman number one, gentleman number two. Gentleman number one is like the queen of cups or the king of cups. His suitor is the king, is the queen of cups. Oh my gosh. Gentleman number one is the king of cups. His suitor would be lady number one, right? They're both ones. Gentleman number one, lady number one. King of cup, queen of cups. It's competition over two people, 39 is the dice. The dice is all about taking chances. Like this woman has to choose who she wants to be with. Number eight is the coffin. Number eight is the coffin. The coffin is all about endings, right? Death that leads to transformations. I think this woman here has to make a choice. 18 is the uh, the dog 
loyalty and support. And then look at the, okay, the clover, number two, luck and happiness. This woman is going through transformations in her life. This woman here, um, the feminine energy here, I feel has just gone through a series of events in her life that is transforming her at a very fast rate. She's showing up as the dog, all about loyalty and commitments and supports. You know, the dog is, it always reminds me of someone who's honorable in character. Then number two is the clover. There's like two men here fighting over a woman, competing. They want to, um, let me see here. Then you have number six, a lack of clarity. Okay, what is this? Tell us more. I want to make sure I get this right. Okay, maybe she should be careful because 19 is the tower. The tower is like governments, institutions, corporations. I think these are I think these two men are like false lovers, false soulmates. Number 1. They are meant to distract her from something really big that she's connected to. They are meant to steer her in the wrong direction, misguide her is what I just heard. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Like, the, do you see this child, this just adorable little girl, and then she's imagining, look at the castle. There's something here that this feminine has maybe envisioned and manifested to life. She's a part of something much bigger that I feel the enemy doesn't want her to be a part of. Like, like there's something that this woman here has created, envisioned, manifested, you know? There's some people who are very gifted and they can think about something, imagine something and manifest, manifest it to life. There are some people who have such a close relationship to God where when they pray, that prayer is heard instantly and it's answered by God. When they wish for something, God grants it to them. Like, there's something that this, because, okay, look at the castle. And look at, look at this castle here, but it's called a tower. Like, there's something that this, this feminine here is, okay, if her romance with these two masculine feels blocked, that could be God protecting her. Because why would God block something? if it's meant to be, you know, like, like if God sends a man into your life, the two, and then, you know, the two of you would come right together. But if there's like obstacles and conflict and drama and confusion, that could be God's way of saying, no, these two men are not the one for you. You know, anything, remember that anything that comes from God, it comes with peace and clarity. Anything that comes from the devil it comes with conflict and confusion. You know, I'm not trying to say that everything's going to be easy, but if it comes from God and there is, you know, some sort of difficulty that comes with it, God will always give you the solution. Okay? You will always be able to overcome it, but just keep that in mind. Anything that comes from God, it comes with peace and clarity. Anything that comes from the devil comes with chaos and confusion. And it's because it's much easier manipulating someone who is in a state of chaos and confusion than, manipu ma than manipulating someone who's in a state of peace and clarity. There's something that this child here, you know, this, this, this child of God will call them, you know, they're sitting in their feminine energy, whether they're a man or woman. So don't mind me saying he or she, the cards are energies that any gender can embody. But I, I really feel like the feminine here has like manifested something beyond her greatest imagination or his greatest imagination. This child here is a part of something way bigger than what they know, but the enemy doesn't want her to be a part of it. Huh. The enemy doesn't want her to be a part of it because it gives her a lot of power. It gives her more power. This child is already powerful, right? Through the power of God. 
And now there's something here that will make this child even more powerful. The, 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 the tower, so remember the cloud showed up first, which represents a lack of clarity. Then the tower shows up, which represents uh, uh, governments, institutions, corporations, companies, organizations, you know, that's what the tower is. Like when you see the tower, you're talking about the big boys, right? Who have the power, the wealth, the influence. Um, it could be that these two men are connected to, maybe these two men are connected to the tower, right? Some sort of company or organization. Um, number 12 is the bird messenger, message, message, message. I don't know, y'all. Deep down in my spirit, I feel like there's some illusions here. There's some illusions. I feel like somebody wants to misguide this child of God away from some sort of big blessing that they have manifested. I feel like the enemy is using these two men to distract this child of God and to steer her in the wrong direction. There's something here where, like, these two men are being used as a distraction by the devil. The devil's using them. They feel like Here's the thing. The devil has a way of making lust look like love. I feel like these two men feel very drawn to this feminine and they feel just called to be with her. They believe that she's the one and the both of them have been fighting over her. But I feel like it's causing a lot of conflict and confusion in her life. They're both competing over her. Look, it's like romance. It's like she's dealing with something she had okay this person this 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 feminine here has to be really careful because it just looks like she's dealing with both love and career like romance versus career and finances there's something there where i feel the enemy is is attacking this feminine in her, in in the various aspects of her life like the enemy's attacking her love life and the enemy is attacking her career and finance. There's some sort of opportunity here. Let me see, tell us more about this tower. Number four, the house. You see, this has to do with like, I feel like this has to do with her career, her finance, her ambitions, her goals, her pursuits. But then she has two men here who are very romantically interested in her i mean they just feel like like these men are like it's almost like they're gonna die if they don't get to be with her but i feel like that's the i feel like that's the devil trying to stir some strong desire in the both of them so that they will keep on pursuing her and distracting her there's something that they are doing that's causing conflict for this woman it's like two men yeah it's like two men passionately pursuing her, but the way they are passionately pursuing her is putting obstacles in her way. 23 is the mice. The mice is all about a loss, destruction, and devastation. You see, this is, this is lust. These two men are in lust, not love. They, have, they are completely captured by this romance but you don't want to be captured by anything. You don't want to be captured by love. You want to be, I've heard like, like you can be captivated by someone. You can be captivated by love, but you don't want to be captured where it's like it forms that kind of obsession and you feel enslaved, imprisoned. You're stuck in your head. You're obsessing over the person. You want to control the person. You want to possess the person. That is lust. That's not love. And I'm telling you, the devil has a way of making lust look like love. The devil is a magician. He's an illusionist. He can make certain feelings feel, he, he can make certain emotions feel like love, but really it's lust. Okay? He's a trickster. 
he can make certain emotions feel like love. The emotions that these men are feeling is lust, is not love. They are so like passionate about being with her that it's almost like they want to capture her. They want to possess her. They want to control her. They have these really, really strong desires for her. And it's two of them. I'm telling you, it's two men. And they're like fighting. They're fighting over her. But the this conflict between the two of them is causing commotion in her life. It's causing her to miss out on something that she's supposed to be a part of which is why the mice is here, a loss, a loss, destruction and devastation. There's something that this woman is very passionate about. I feel like it's a, it's a pursuit, it's an ambition, it's a goal of hers, it's a dream of hers, and it's here for her, but she, but she keeps on having a missed opportunity. She keeps on missing her chance because these men are in the way they're fighting over her look so 40 is the mask the mask is false you know the mask is falseness right something appearing to be what it isn't that's what the mask is to it's just not time yet like like like, like believe it or not I, I don't okay I've said this to so many people that God works by seasons and I don't feel like this feminine is in a season of love God works by season I feel like this season is for this 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 feminine here to establish herself career-wise finance-wise something like that, that that has to do with her accomplishments and then maybe the next season will be her season for love. But God works by seasons. You have your season of love. You have your season where you're just being called to invest in yourself, self-improvements, you know, focus on your money, focus on establishing establishing yourself. Then you have your season of trial and tribulations. You know, there's different seasons. God works by seasons. I just feel like the, the 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 devil's trying to use love or romance but it's a false kind of romance to block and and distract and and mislead this feminine here hence why her romantic suitors are showing up as the mask they like these men may look good from a distance but they come with problems they come with trouble and for my male viewers, this is still your reading as well. Don't mind me saying he or she. You could be a man where, you know, you are this child of God. And there's some sort of incredible, like, this has to do with your dreams. This has to, this is connected to, like, your pursuits. This is connected to your ambitions, your goals. Like, an opportunity of a lifetime. Like, it's on the level of, like, companies, corporations, organizations, governments. It's your opportunity to promote, to elevate, and maybe even for some of you establish generational wealth, you know? And, but then you you might have like two women, right? Who are fighting over you and trying to be of a, of a big distraction. I'm telling you, these men here or these women here who wanna be with you, they're false. Each of them represent a false pathway that the enemy wants you to take, that the devil wants you to take, because there's only one pathway that we should take in life, which is the pathway that God has paved out for us. But because we all have free will, we have options, and the devil will always try to pave a false pathway. The devil will always try to present false offers and options to us, but there's really only one pathway that God has selected. He paved it for you that you should take. You're not forced to take it. We have free will. But if you take the wrong pathway, you may not be able to access the blessings that God has intended for you, you know, for you. Or maybe you will, but it'll take longer. Like if you take a different pathway, 
it might be you stray off the wrong path and it'll take a lot of time for you to get back on the right track. You just, you know, you just want to take the pathway that is straight. Okay, you just want to take the pathway that is that is straight. There's no twists and turns that will waste your time, that will cause delays and blockages in your life. I feel like that's that's the pathway that the devil doesn't want you to take, even though I feel like you're already on it. I feel like you're already on the right path. You're already on the right track. You are elevating and progressing at such a, 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 a fast rate that the devil wants to get you off of the right track, off of the right pathway, to slow you down, to delay you. And the way he's he, he wants to do it is through love. One of the biggest ways that the devil will present himself to us is through romance because everybody wants romance. Everybody wants love. We all need love, right? He will present himself to you as true love. And I'm telling you, when the devil appears to you, he knows how to disguise himself. Understand that the devil is a spirit. He has to use people, places, and things to carry out his dirty work. These men look superficially good, physically good, but you don't see the spirit that they carry, okay? Like these men will, will literally devastate you. They will cause you problems in your life. These, this is not the man that God has chosen for you. This is not what we would call your kingdom spouse because in the kingdom of God, we come in pairs, there is a particular, a specific man or woman who God has chosen for you. These men or women, they are counterfeits. And if you partner up with them, if you commit to them, man, they're going to cause you problems. They're going to put a lot of, you're going to experience a lot of hardships and difficulties and it'll take you a long time to get back on the right path. And that is exactly what the devil is trying to do to slow down your rate of, of progression, your rate of evolution, because the devil can tell, the devil can tell when God is about to bless you. He may not know what the blessing is. He may not know when the blessing's coming and he doesn't have, the devil cannot stop your blessing, but what he can do is negatively influence you to make poor decisions that will sabotage yourself. No one can take away your blessing. You're the only one who can mess up. You're the only one by the poor decisions that you make. And I believe that that is what the devil is trying to do. Influence you to make poor decisions that'll put you on the wrong pathway and cause a lot of difficulties for you. Be careful who you choose as your spouse, as your lover, as your partner. Be very, very careful. These men want to commit to you or these women want you to commit to them. That's why the ring is here. But once you tie yourself up in a commitment, I'm telling you, it'll be very hard breaking away from these sorts of false lovers here. They look really good physically, okay? But the spirit, right? Don't just look at a person for how they look. Pray for discernment so that you will see past their looks and that you will be able to see the spirit that they carry. They come with problems that will slow you down along your own soul journey here on earth called life. These false lovers represent the wrong pathways that the devil wants you to take in order to steer you away from your correct, your rightful pathway. They're no good. They're no good for you. They're, they are no good for you. There's something about this here where I'm like, there, you know, for the devil to be like on your tail like this and really trying to mess you up, there must be something good that God has for you. There must be. I want to know more about this tower because it's like it's something that he doesn't, the, the, the devil just, let me see here. Privilege lady. Distant horizons. Your, oh my gosh, thank you, Holy Spirit. This message hit, I just heard it from the Holy Spirit. It hit me so hard. The left side of my head started aching for a little bit, but now it's gone. 
is such a powerful message, y'all. This pathway that you've been on, it's leading you to the kind of wealth that you could, <laughs> that is beyond your imagination. When I say wealth, I'm not just talking about money. You know, when people say health is wealth, wealth is in like, you're going to be wealthy when it comes to your health, when it comes to your personal life, when it comes to your romantic life, you know, when it comes to your financial life, your career, this pathway that you're currently on is leading you to some extra order, extraordinary blessings. Your kingdom spouse is, is on this, is, 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 is on this pathway, is connected to this pathway. Somewhere somewhere down this pathway that you're taking, you're gonna meet your kingdom spouse, your true love. The man who, the man or woman who God has selected, prepared for you. This pathway, let me see if I can. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Hold on, y'all. Let me see if I can. The devil is a liar. Let me let me show you guys because you guys know I am a seer. I see they're the clairvoyant, right? Let me show you guys what's going on. This is you. This is you, okay? Child of God. Right? You have this this you know, big smile on your face. You're blessed and highly favored, right? I would give you here, but you could be a guy or, or girl. Okay, this is you. You have, what is that? Oh my gosh, I was just reading. Y'all, I had Bible study today and the scripture was about the Lord making your pathway straight. Oh, let me find it. He will make your pathway straight. Okay, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. That is Proverbs 3 verses 50. Um, can we talk? Let me slow down. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 to 6. But there's another one. Let me see if I can find it here. Yes, it's this one where the Lord says, I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. There's something here. Okay, let me get back to this illustration, right? Child of God, this is you. You have several pathways that you can take, okay? You've been on the pathway that you're supposed to be on. There's only one pathway that we should be on, which is the pathway of God, right? But there are other funky, there are other funky pathways that the enemy wants you to take. Okay, and I'm gonna make this one like zigzag. And I'm telling you, these other funky pathways, right? Wrong way. They come These other pathways come with trouble. So it's not to say that you won't make your accomplishments and you won't, you know, receive your blessings, but it'll take longer. Um, there, it comes with much more heartbreak and disappointments. On this pathway, the blessings could be smaller, okay? If you, if you take this pathway here, look, look at the wiggly. It's not a straight path is what I'm trying to depict. It's not a straight path. It comes with twists and turns. Like imagine you're traveling in your car and you're using your navigation and it's just like guiding you twist and turn and this and this like to the point where you're like, oh my gosh, this is not a straight pathway. 
okay? This is not a straight pathway. You, you eventually realize that, you eventually realize that it's a difficult pathway. He will make your paths straight. That was Proverbs 3, verse 6. Okay? You realize if you take this pathway with all this wiggle wiggle, you know, it's harder. It's more difficult. It comes with more complications. It comes with more hardships and difficulties. You take this pathway, you're screwed. Zigzags. Imagine driving down a zigzag road. You know what I'm saying? It comes with a lot of problems, a lot of heartbreaks. Things are going to be much more difficult for you. But you come and you use this pathway or you continue. Those of you where you've been on this, the same pathway, you continue down this pathway of God that he has paid for you. I'm talking, you're unlocking big blessings and things are just going to come to you smoothly, more easily. You know what I'm saying? Not everything's going to be perfect, but it's just, it's a smooth pathway. Whereas you're walking down this pathway, you are accessing all of the blessings that God intends for you. And down this pathway, down this pathway, there's something here for your career. Okay. There's a career blessing. You know, there are big financial blessings. You know, there are, and then, and then your kingdom spouse. Your kingdom spouse. Your kingdom spouse. The man or woman who God has literally chosen, selected, prepared for you. And then your incredible family life that you will have one day. For those of you who already don't, you know, your family life, everything, your destiny. This is you. This is you walking in your, your, your destiny and purpose that God created you for. And also by taking this pathway, it draws you closer. It, it leads you closer and closer to God, Christ. That's what I'm going to use as a symbol for God, right? Leads you closer and closer to Christ. It's a pathway that the Lord has paved for you. Why take a difficult path? Who in their right mind would choose a difficult path? No one would, which is where the devil comes in. The devil is represented by a snake because he is manipulative. The devil can't block these gigantic blessings that God has for you. But what he'll do is he'll influence you. Okay, he'll influence you. How does he, how does he influence you? Through people, places, and things bad people, places, and things. He's presenting to you false love, not true love. These, these men or women will lead you down the wrong path. You know, it's interesting. You have two, two of them here. Each of them represent the wrong way. That is how so when people say, the devil can't block your blessings, no one can take away your blessings. Yeah, it's true. But also keep in mind that he can influence you to making bad decisions that will cause you to have missed opportunities in your life. Keep that in mind. Because, you know, some, there are some teachings that can make people lazy, that can make people feel like, you know, there is no such thing as spiritual warfare. There is. The devil's constantly trying to negatively influence people. So you have to be aware of spiritual warfare. You have to be aware of his, his, his devices, his methods, his tactics and strategies so that you can make good decisions for your life. This is what he's trying to do. I hope you guys like my illustration. <laughs> that is what he's trying to do, you guys. I'm telling you, and he's using a person to do it, a romantic interest to do it. Wow. This 
tower here represents a high place. It represents a high place that you are connected to if you continue to stay on the right pathway. It leads you, this right pathway that you've been on, it leads you to privileges and luxuries that you wouldn't have if you were to choose the other pathway. You become the privileged lady or the privileged gentleman. God is taking you to new horizons, great horizons, look, distant horizons. This is like beyond your imaginations. The distant horizon card, it represents your deepest dreams and goals and yearnings and fantasies. You're going to be sky high is where God is taking you. And it comes with a whole lot of wealth and not just material wealth. And that is what the devil doesn't want you to access. The more wealth you have, the more power. And you're already powerful as a child of God. Be careful with your decisions, the decisions that you make when it comes to the commitments that you're putting yourself in. And look at what they're already doing. This man here, okay, some of you, you're dealing with gentleman number two. He's passionate, he's sexy, he's adventurous, he's determined, go-getter sort of energy. He comes with excitement, but maybe he comes with too much drama. Maybe he has anger problems, you know, temperament problems, addictions. You know, maybe he likes to cheat, maybe he's scandalous. You know, there's problems that come with these men they or these women. Some of you, you're dealing, some of you, you're not dealing with two, but you're dealing with one of them. One of them who is as passionate as gentleman number two. Some of you, you're dealing with gentleman number one. He's charming. He's a charmer. He's a king of cups. He has excellent interpersonal skills. Oh, he knows how to keep you hooked. You know, he knows how to keep you hooked. He knows how to make you feel special. Like the two of you have a special bond. But he continues to leave you disappointed. And it forms sort of like a hole, like a hole in your heart. Because he gives you all of these expectations, but he doesn't meet them. You know, like, 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 like this is someone here. He knows how to emotionally fulfill you temporarily. But then he kind of leaves you hanging. I don't know how to explain it, but there's a hole that is forming in your heart because this man has disappointed you. Some of you are dealing with gentleman number two. Others of you are dealing with gentleman number one. If they're already causing you problems now, then imagine the kind of problems that they will cause you in the future. You have got to resist temptation by putting aside your, your selfish wants and desires and honoring God's will for your life, knowing very well that what this, these men have put you through or this, this woman has put you through is not a representation of true love. True love is God's love for us. That's what true love is. Look at the way God loves you even though I don't think any man can ever love us the way that God loves us. But true love is a representation of God's love for us. Is this godly kind of love that you're receiving from this man or this woman? Because if it's not, then that means it wasn't sent by God. This relationship wasn't sent by God. This romance wasn't sent by God. And then for a few of you, you know, you're not you're not with you're not with these men or you're not with these women but they are desperately wanting you to be with them take it how it resonates it's temptation it's temptation they are causing you to have a loss something like something's happening here where they're both you know they're competing for you you have a man or woman who is competing for you. And for a few of you, it's two of them competing for you. And it's causing you, it's causing you some, 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 some commotion. They're, they're, they're causing, they're creating, they're stirring up commotion in your life. That's causing you to lose. That's causing you to have some sort of missed opportunity here. 
Coffin. That's a death, that's endings. That's what these men want, or that's what these women want. Whoever this false lover is, they don't want you to have a new beginning. They don't want you to have a new beginning. They want to cause an ending to your new beginning. They don't want you to fly sky high. Change. They want to change your path. The, like There's something here where they want you to go the direction that they're in. But it's not the right direction for you. And they could be offering things. They could be making you offers. But it's far less than the real blessing that God has for you. Occupation. I feel like <sighs> there is a spirit working through this false lover, this false romantic suitor here. There is a spirit. And I feel like it's several spirits. I feel like one of them is definitely the spirit of Jezebel, which is all about manipulation. But there's another spirit here where it's almost like you have some sort of big opportunity, but this false lover is like, you don't need that. I can offer you something. Like there's something here where let's say you have a job opportunity, right? Because occupation is here. Let's say you have some sort of big opportunity that's connected to this tower. He or she, this false romantic suitor, wants to be the one to offer you a job. It's almost like they feel like they can provide for you what you need, but they are not your provider. God is. It's almost like they want you to be dependent on them so that you never leave. You have some sort of big blessing here. I'm telling you, it's connected to the tower, but they want, and they know about it. I believe this, this false lover here, this false romantic suitor has been invading you and trying to block opportunities from you, trying to withhold information from you, keep information from you. They want to instead give you a job or offer you something they want the offer to come from them and and you know and nothing else they want to change your pathway change but whatever they have to offer you it is not the real thing and it's far less it's smaller than the actual blessing it's almost like god wants to offer you the tower God wants to offer you the tower, but he or she wants to offer you a house. You know, like there's something here where whatever this false lover or, or you know, false romantic suitor wants to offer you, it is far less. It's like God wants to offer you gold. Whatever they're offering you is like bronze, y you know, like... And the truth is because they're not God. I feel like you're dealing with a false lover or a romantic suitor who literally takes themselves to be God. And they're not. They are a false God. And 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 maybe they even want to buy your love. Maybe these two, you know, maybe this false lover here comes from money, but they don't have the kind of wealth that God has. That that's the thing. When you are a child of God, no man, you know, like <laughs> I, okay, bear with me so I can I can explain this. Like this false lover here doesn't realize that you really are a true child of God. They don't I don't think they realize it. Maybe they don't even really recognize God, right? Um I mean, people with this kind of ego, I can only imagine they have a God complex. And so being with you is not easy. First of all, when you are in a commitment with God, you know, because as as a ch as children of God, we are in commitments. We're in a commitment with God. 
I even did a video not too long ago, and I'll try to find it and link it in the description box. It's called uh, The Bride. You are the bride to Christ. You're a bride of Christ. You're in a marriage with God. You're in a, you're in a, a, a commitment with God. He is your first love. He is who you seek first. And then, so at the end of the day, whatever you need, God provides it. You really don't need a person, you know, but you can want a person, right? We all, we all want someone. But at the end of the day, God is your sole provider. Okay, this false lover here, man or woman, they think that they can buy you. But they don't realize that you don't have a price tag because of the God who you are connected to, who is priceless. Like, <laughs> it's almost like you are a child of God. Your father is God, the, the creator of the whole universe and more and beyond. And then you have a man or woman who's like, oh, I can buy you this and I can buy you that. And you're like, <laughs> you're like, um, uh. I can already, I can get it from my dad. Like literally I can get it from my father. And when I say dad or father, I'm talking about God. Whatever this man or woman, this false lover wants to buy you or give you or offer you, God is, God is offering you something bigger and it's all yours. It's 100% yours. Like you're not getting it from a person. I think I'm starting to realize what's going on. I think there there's someone here who really wants to be with a child of God, like romantically, but they don't realize that this child of God, this woman or man, literally, like is literally connected to God, has been marked and claimed by God. So the only way that that this man or woman can get to you is by going through God. God has to approve of it first before they can get access to you, which is probably why each time they try to get access to you, there is a blockage. There is an obstacle. They have, In order to get to you, they have to go to God. And I feel like that's just what you should understand about your life because you're so, you're, you're so close to God. You're so protected by him that in order for anyone to get to you, they have to go through God first. Okay, they have to. <sighs> They're not seeing the bigger picture. This false romantic suitor, and that's the thing, this person is false because you guys are not really equally yoked. You know, they don't see things from your perspective. There may not even be a real compatibility there in the first place. There's feelings there, but are you guys really compatible? Hmm. That is so interesting. Whatever God has blessed you with, I believe that this false lover doesn't want you to get it. They want you to go with whatever they have for you. They want to change <laughs> whatever God has for you, intends for you. This false lover feels like they can get you in, you know, get you to take the wrong direction to be with them, you know, because it just doesn't make any sense where God is like, I have a tower for you. But this false lover is like, no, like, like, no, 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 no. Change that. I have a house for you. Go with the house instead. They're trying to steer you in the wrong direction. And they're doing this by invading your life and trying to control you in many ways. I don't know what else to say. It's quite sad. Courtship is here. They want you, they want to steer you in the wrong direction to 
to come together with you. Courtship is all about coming together, but you see the plan isn't working. Despair. The plan isn't coming together. And by the way, they know that there's something much bigger for you. Like whoever this false lover is, they invade you a lot. They could be reading your emails. They could be reading your letters, hiding things from you. They want to steer you in their path, towards their path is what they're trying to do. You know, it's almost like, it's almost like back to this drawing that I did where gentleman number one, right? Gentleman number one is like, come, come this way, you know? He's like, come this way. And then gentleman number two is like, no, come this way. You know, like they're trying to influence you. <laughs> gentleman number one is like, come this way. That's the wrong way. Come this way. That's the wrong way. Keep on walking down this pathway here. But each time you do, I think for some of you, they're actually trying to manipulate something here to get you in the wrong in the wrong uh, the wrong pathway or on the wrong pathway. There's some manipulation going on here, as in I believe they're trying to interfere with some sort of opportunity that is for you. That plan to guide you in their direction in order to come together with you, it's not coming together. The plan is backfiring, despair. Wow. They could even be trying to block you, you know, put some blockages um, as you're on this right pathway so that you'll to steer you in the wrong direction. I feel like they're thinking that if they cause you enough difficulties, you'll end up taking the, the, the other pathway, which is the wrong pathway. I think something's going on here where you have someone like a false lover who's trying to pretty much make your life a living hell. Make it very difficult for you to move forward on your on your rightful pathway to steer you in another direction. Like they want to confuse you. There's something there's something there's like heavy manipulation going on here. Okay, you have mature man main female and then journey there's a man here mature man is like a father father figure mentor elder Hmm. And then journey. I feel like that's the pathway you're, you're supposed to be on with this mature man. Y'all are supposed to come together. But you guys are not showing up as a romantic suitor, though. I think it's some sort of like working together. I think the two of you are supposed to work together or something. And then journey. That's the pathway you're meant to be on. Yeah, pathway just showed up. I can't make this up. Who is this mature man? Is this some, this is someone who you're supposed to be partnering up with, but I don't feel like it's romantic. Look, he's in the energy of poverty, which is to lack. I think he's having he's been having a difficult time. Unexpected income. It could be something that this man here wants to like partner up with you for. Yeah, he wants to 
he wants to give you something. And then house, he wants to give you something here. He wants to partner up with you. It's an opportunity. But he's having a difficult time. He's having a difficult time. Like, could it be that he's having a difficult, difficult time reaching you? Uh, look, he's showing up as the wealthy man. But imprisonment. Like, there's something here where I feel like this man's having a hard time. Let me see. Imprisonment, great fortune. Let me see. Thoughts. He's having a hard time with something here. I don't know if it's that he's having a hard time connecting with you or if he has been trying to connect with you, but it's being blocked. Is it being blocked? It's being blocked. 21 is the mountain blockages and obstacles. That's literally what the mountain card represents. Hmm. Twenty-six. The book. What about this book? 34 is the fish, abundance and resources. You see, this false lover is trying to block this mature man, wealthy man from connecting with you because they know that he can offer you more than what they have. They know that this man comes with abundance. To be abundant is to have more than enough. This man here is connected to abundance and resources beyond your imaginations. And again, the kind of spirit that this false lover carries is a very competitive spirit. It's like they don't want you to, to even be connected to anyone who is more successful than them. That's what it is. They want to stall something, stall this coming together between you and this mature man Because they want him to change his mind about whatever it is. Like, I feel like this man wants to work with you, partner up with you. They feel like if they can stall it long enough, if they can stall it long enough, he will change his mind and become disinterested in you and no longer offer you that opportunity that he wants to offer you. Whatever the opportunity is that this mature man wants to offer you, it comes with the, like, it'll open new doors for you. That's why the 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 uh, the key is here. The key is discoveries and solutions. But I feel like this is one of your destiny helpers. Then you have number five, the tree, health and longevity. But it could even be a particular industry. It could be the tree card could represent a particular industry that this man, this mature man will help you step into to establish yourself. Number 12 is the, the owl, wisdom. Like th this man here, I feel it will be a big mentor. He's gonna guide you, mentor you. 16 is the star. This is someone here, whoever this man is, I feel like he's very well established, like an emperor type. 
and he's going to teach you what you need to know. He's going to help you. It's a This man is a destiny helper. But each time he's trying to connect with you, there is a blockage. Look, somebody wants to keep you hooked like an anchor, but not in a good way. They want to keep you stuck. They want to, they want to hold you back. Hmm. Hold you back from your elevation. The stork is rising to the top. So how do you find your way around this? Thirty is peace and serenity. How do you find your way around this? You know, because it feels like a big, a big ball of mumbo jumbo. You know, it feels like a, like a, like a big mess that these two people have caused, you know, or this person here, you're dealing with one of them, one or the other, that this false lover has caused, this false romantic suitor has caused. How do you get, you know, how do you find your way around it? What are you being called to do, right? What's the solution? Two of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles. I feel like you got to make up your mind, first of all. I feel like you got to make up your mind. about what it is that you want. Two of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles. Holy Spirit, what is the guidance? Hmm. Seven of Swords. Seven of Swords, that's a sneaky card. judgment. I feel like you got to make up your mind and I feel like go and get it. Like, 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 do you, maybe you know who this mature man is, this mature man who's wealthy and well-established, you know, maybe you do know who he is. Or maybe you know the pathway to him. I feel like there's something here that you feel called to do, and I feel like you should do it. You might have to be sneaky with it, right? Because this false lover is like literally watching your every move, trying to control you. But Seven of Swords, Judgment. ones carrying out a plan yeah like move forward it, it, there's something like is there something that you're being called to do something that you know about like 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 it's almost like taking a leap of faith because first of all I feel like communication was definitely interfered with I feel like you have some sort of career finance opportunity it's a big one I feel like it's connected to the tower 
you know, that's like governments, institutions, companies, corporations, big organizations. I feel like you know where you need to go. I feel like there is a place that you're being called to. Justice. I feel like there's a place that you're being called to go. You know, there's something that you're being called to do. And you just have to take this leap of faith and do it. Um, because if you're waiting on, you know, some sort of news document or something, information, I feel like it was definitely blocked, interfered with. Wow. Wow. The thing is, wherever this place is, I don't feel like it's far from you. I feel like it's in your community. Wherever you're being led, I feel like it's in your community. Page of Pentacles. Hmm. That was the Page of Pentacles that almost showed up. Yeah, it's in your community. Whatever this like job opportunity, this career finance opportunity is, is in your community, hence the Ten of Cups. It's in your community. It's not far from you. You just like have to take this leap of faith. It's some sort of commitment that, you know, like you're good. Like it's some sort of, it's probably even like a contract that someone wants, wants with you. Hmm. You know, it's, it's, it could be a contract. It's something that's going to keep you solid and secured. Uh, whatever this career finance opportunity is, man, it, it's going to keep you solid and secured. The four of pentacles is all about security. The Four of Wands is a commitment. Look, it's connected to some sort of, like, Ten of Pentacles is like business empires, uh, wealthy families, um, lump sums of money. Your long-term security and stability is what the Ten of Pentacles is. Wow. I feel like this mature man is wondering where are you? Like, like, I feel like this man, King of Wands. Mature man. I feel like he is a go-getter, ambitious, and he wants to work with you. Eight of Pentacles is work. This is a man who just wants to work with you. It's not really, it doesn't feel like it's romance. The world a successful completion and he's gonna do just that. Like this is someone here where, you know, he's going to fulfill, you know, he's, he's not gonna break the promise. There's something here about this mature man where The Nine of Swords. This is like a no-nonsense kind of man. This is not someone who, you know, is for the funny business. I feel like this man just wants to work with you. I feel like it's some sort of offer opportunity that he has for you. He's very genuine, Page of Cups. But the way he's his Nine of Swords, you know, Nine of Swords can be military-like. Like, he's, he's a no-nonsense sort of individual. This is not someone who wants to take advantage of you. Ace of Cups, very caring as well. But the thing is, it's hidden from you. The moon, the page of swords, you see, I feel like he has tried, pages are all about communication and news. I feel like he has tried to communicate with you, but there's something here where your communication's being like, messed with, intercepted. I don't know how this false lover is able to do this. Death, 
king of swords oh the thing is okay let me see here seven of cups nine of cups I feel like you're under surveillance. Like, are you being watched? Like, like I see this false lover looking at you from a distance and he gets, he or she gets a whole lot of fulfillment and satisfaction from just looking at you. Wow, like this is an obsession, okay. I don't think this is the kind of love that you want. I'm telling you, something, something's, something's weird about this. You're under surveillance. Like, 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 they're able to see you. Whoever this false lover is, they're able to watch you from a distance. That's creepy. So they watch your every move, and they can tell who's trying to come into your life and who's not, and that's how they block it. They're always keeping an eye on you. That is freaky. Knight of Wands. You're, you're, you're under surveillance. They're watching you. You're being watched. I hope there's not, I hope it's not cameras that they're using because it kind of feels like it, it's cameras to star. You're under surveillance. There's a spotlight on you, the star. There's a spotlight on you. It's cameras. They're watching you from a distance. Page of Swords is a big social media card, um, but Page of Swords is like from a distance, something from a distance. They're, you, they're using a camera to do this. That's the only way you can watch someone from a distance. There's no other way that I can think of that you can watch someone from a distance. I don't know what y'all think, but there's no other way. It's only through, through a camera, y'all. Like you're being monitored. Even the Page of Swords is like watching from a distance, investigating. This is some freaky stuff here. Like, like, it's like they're addicted to watching you. They're addicted to watching you. lovers yeah there's something going on there there's something going on there like like something freaky like is there okay let me move on um something sexual all of these wands like did you well let me not let me not ask you that but there's something here where something sexual something sexual here With all of these, I felt it, and then the wand showed up again, and I'm like, okay, I'll just say it. Something freaky, something sexual, kinky, watching you from a distance. Um, wow.
because they're romantically, okay, Knight of Cups. They're like romantically interested. Nine of Cups in the Hierophant. Why is the Hierophant up here? This person feels like you guys are in a relationship, a commitment. The Hierophant is commitments, marriage. Like they're they're not they don't feel bad for doing this because they don't feel guilty for doing this. They don't feel bad for doing this because they feel like the two of you are already like married in a commitment. Like you guys are already together. There's something here that's like obsessive and freaky. They don't feel bad about it because in their head like you're, you're already theirs. Like, you guys are already in a relationship. A commitment. King of Pentacles. <sighs> okay. How do you find your way around this? You know, like, how do you move forward from this? Because I don't even know how this happened. Like, let me see here. How do you, Three of Pentacles, a collaboration. Did you participate in something with these two, with, 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 with this romantic suitor here? Like, how did this happen? Like, 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 how does this person have this kind of, you know, it's like the right, how do they get the right to invade you like this? You, you know, something about this, like, did you come into an agreement with something unknowingly? Three of Pentacles is a collaboration. Look, you collaborated with this, this romantic suitor. The tower is a dramatic ending, though. You collaborated with them in some way, shape, or form. I'm telling you, you did. The tower is here. Directly, indirectly, knowingly, unknowingly. You, know, you have to welcome this kind of demonic spirit into your life for it to have access to do this to you. It's almost like a house. Right? If somebody knocks on your door, you don't have to open that door, but you open the door and then you allow that person to come into the house. Then they start, they start raising hell in your house. They start controlling you, invading you, putting cameras in your house, you, you know, watching you, monitoring you. You you let it in. There's something here where you came into an agreement with 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 a demonic spirit, and it has like a right to kind of like mess with you. It has some sort of like authorization, should I say. They have, this demonic spirit has the authorization to torment you. How did you, but how did this happen? It's invading you. It's abusing you. The fool, take a leap of faith, take a leap of faith. How did this happen? How did this happen? Ten of Wands, the devil. What I'm saying is demonic spirits have no power or authority over us, but we have to give it an access point to us. And that's why I use that example of like, you know, a stranger comes knocking at your door and then you let them inside of your house. Like it's due to something here that happened that this person was able to get this kind of authorization to abuse you like this. I'm trying to pinpoint what that could have been, you know, coming into agreements with demonic spirits, okay, satanic, uh, uh, sa satanic spirits. How? They're, like, 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 look, because Three of Pentacles is a collaboration. You collaborated in something. 
the tower is an ending, it ended, then you moved on, the fool. But it's still following you, like baggage. The Ten of Wands is past baggage, burdens. And look, the devil. It's a demonic spirit. But it has to use a person to, 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 to carry out the dirty work. It's a demonic spirit that's using this false lover here to do this. Because like the devil is a spirit, right? And here on earth, this is the physical plane, right? The 3D where you see and touch things and we're here in flesh and body. So these spirits have to use a medium. They have to use a person, place or thing, influence, host inside of, and sometimes even possess a person to do these things. The demonic spirit has to enter a person's body is what I'm trying to say. Influence a person to do this. And then look, like Ten of Wands and literally, literally the devil. And look, these two people are chained to the devil. You came into an agreement with some sort of demonic spirit that like is literally raising hell with you. But I'm trying to see like, how could that, you know, and believe it or not, these things happen, right? These things happen. We come into, we come into agreements with, with demonic spirits in so many ways because these demonic spirits are working behind people, places, and things. Like you either, like one thing that I saw is like this, uh, this watching you from a distance, it feels sexual, it feels kinky, it feels freaky. Um, I don't know if this person was like, you know, a sexual partner for you in the past. Um, it's a spirit. It's a demonic spirit. It's following you. Um, what else? It's following you. It's persistent. The seven of pentacles. You know, you, if you dated this person in the past and there, you know how, you know how this, you know how the agreement was, right? It was through the relationship. You let, you, you allow them to enter your life, right? And then if there's some sexual things there, there's something called the transfer of spirits where a spirit that is attached to one person can transfer to the next person. And the quickest way, the, the easiest ways that, that evil spirits can, uh, um, you know, connect from people to people, right? Like it can, it can detach from one person and attach to you is through sexual intercourse. Um, it's persistent. Like this demonic spirit, like the seven of pentacles is literally someone who's persistent and committed. It is competing. It is causing chaos and destruction in your life. It doesn't want you to have forward movement. It's blocking new beginnings from you. It's interfering with anything that is new that wants to come into your life. It is persistent and it is competitive. The five of wands, conflict, chaos, and competition. You collaborated with it. You came into an agreement with this demonic spirit. But remember, spirits have to attach themselves to people, places, and things. So by allowing that person into your life, you're also allowing the spirit that is attached to them, that is influencing them. You're allowing it into your life. I've seen people come into uh, satanic contracts, demonic contracts, through literal contracts that they end up signing. You don't know the kind of demonic forces that work behind people, places, and things, and even organizations. There can be demonic forces working behind organizations and companies and, you know, you... wow. It's persistent, y'all. It's persistent. I don't know, like I, the Eight of Swords, the Wheel of Fortune, this reading is so long, but this is a serious matter. It wants to tangle you up. It's a contract. It's binding, kind of like chain you, right? The chains to this devil. It wants to bind you. 
the eight of swords look at the wheel of fortune the it's like things want to turn forward things the, the wheel of fortune represents the tables turning in your favor right the universe has great things for you but look you're bound there are opportunities waiting for you there are people waiting for you new beginnings waiting for you new relationships waiting for you friendships partnerships work opportunities financial opportunities there are big blessings waiting for you You, I feel like you collaborated with this person in some way. I do. I, look, five of wands. You just got to be honest with yourself and think about this. The five of wands, conflict, trauma, competition. You collaborated with this person. I'm going to say Ace of Swords. Like you affiliated with this person in some way. And that's why like he doesn't want to let you go or she doesn't want to let you go. But remember, there's a spirit that's working through this person. So when you came into an agreement with this person, right, when you like connected when you came together with this person you also came together with this demonic spirit that is attached to them that's why it's like be careful with the kind of people who you welcome into your life who you welcome into your house again it's like that that visual imagine you have a house someone knocks on your door you open your door you let them in man and they raise hell in your house and now you don't know how to get them out of your house and it's causing a disturbance it's causing a disturbance. It's controlling you in your own house. It's monitoring you. It's watching you in your own house. It is a spirit. And everything that this person is doing, even if they're watching you through the camera, everything that this person is doing is just a, is just, is just a depiction of what the spirit is doing. There's a spirit monitoring you. And there's a person monitoring you, but physically as well. Everything that this person is doing to you, harassing you, stalking you, watching you, everything that this person is doing to you physically is just a depiction of what this demonic spirit is doing to you spiritually. This is some crazy stuff, y'all. You, you collaborated with this person. Three of Pentacles, you did. I don't know, like, were you, because the five of wands is conflict, conflict, drama. Ace of swords, the truth and clear. You see, you see, spirit is, spirit is highlighting how you became like affiliated to this person. Some sort of drama here. That's how you that's how you got connected to this person. Spirit is literally like the ace of swords is the divine truth and clarity. Spirit is bringing you clarity on how you how you got connected to this person. For for some of you you dated this person. You were romantically connected to this person. You know? Just be honest with yourself. And then for others of you you could have tried to help this person through some sort of conflict that they were in. Three of Wands, teamwork. Three of Wands, teamwork. So for others of you, you were romantically connected to this person in the past. That spirit is still connecting with you, is still following you around. So this person is physically still, this person is only doing to you what the spirit is doing to you. What this person is doing to you is just a depiction of what this demonic spirit is doing to you. And demons don't need cameras to follow you around. They're literally following, they can, they, <laughs> demonic spirits are literally like just wandering around the earth, wandering around our world and just waiting for an access point to us. 
It's like a bunch of spirits, like ghosts, just floating around our world, just waiting for an access point to cause destruction into our lives. That is what scripture uh, uh, teaches us, which is why the Lord always calls for us to be vigilant. Because there are evil spirits just prowling, waiting to seek us, waiting to cause trouble, to get access, that access point to us. Let me tell you something. You were this person's lover or you helped this person in some sort of drama conflict that they were that they were connected to because look look the 3 of wands is teamwork I'm going to just end the reading here you know if this is your reading or not my goal my job is just to deliver the message but this this is a big spiritual problem that you're in. Um, there is a, uh, it's, it's a, it's a karmic contract, a karmic soul tie, whatever you want to call it. From what I know about spiritual warfare, this is a spiritual stronghold. It is a demonic stronghold that you are in that needs to be broken. There needs to be a spiritual severing of ties between you and this demonic spirit. That's the only way that you'll get this person, this false lover away from you. Because they are following you around the same way that this demonic spirit is following. Everything this false lover is doing to you is just a physical representation of what this demonic spirit is doing to you in the spiritual realm. You are in... A demonic stronghold that is what you're in this is like I really hope that this the way I explained it kind of broke things down for so that you can understand why you are going through certain things why you're experiencing certain things I hope I, I really broke it down for you like spiritually and physically so you can understand what's going on ten of swords the king of cups Look at that, that was the five of cups. Ten of swords is a betrayal and a backstab. The king of cups, the five of cups. You feel betrayed. Because some of you could have really tried to help this person. But I feel like there were so many red flags. You know, so many red flags for you to not move forward with this connection. This person comes with drama. Ace of Wands. Too much drama. And heartbreak. I'm going to go ahead and end the reading here. Be careful with your affiliations, the people, places, and things that you welcome into your life. Because behind them could be the devil. I'm going to go ahead and end the reading here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, I really hope that this message helps you. I hope it gives you some good clarity and a good understanding of what is going on around you because I can only imagine how you're feeling right now. It feels like an entrapment. You feel trapped. That is how it feels to be under a demonic stronghold. It's like you're imprisoned. Um, it's time to start making amends with God, reconciling with God. Um, know that the Lord is a chain breaker. There's no chain too tight that the Lord cannot break. There is no hole too deep 
that the Lord cannot remove you out of. And there's no ties too strong that the Lord cannot sever. The Lord Jesus Christ is literally known as a chain. He's known to be a chain breaker. There's no curse. There's no charm. There's no hex. There's no witchcraft that the Lord cannot break and destroy. Uh, but this calls for some intense, this is spiritual warfare that you are going through. This calls from, this calls for some intense spiritual healing and deliverance by making amends with God and, you know, kind of reflecting on what, what you could have done differently, even though I'm sure you had good intentions, but what is it that you learn? You know, maybe sit there with a journal, a diary, and really reflect on ways to correct yourself, right? Ways to do things better. What did you overlook? What could you have learned from this to do differently? That is how you reconcile with God so that he may step in and really uh, free you from this imprisonment. Um, and of course, I'm here for you always around late of last year, around October, September, the Holy Spirit led me to offering um, spiritual healing and deliverance services through my intercessory prayer work that I've been doing for uh, over 10 years now. Um, so spiritual warfare is nothing new for me. Um, but if you need assistance, I am here for you as well. Um, and many of you are already becoming familiar with the intercessory prayer work. I've had a handful of you guys join and testimonies is all that I'm seeing through the power of the Holy Spirit uh, that I've been able to do to help some of you break out of uh, these demonic strongholds. You know, it happens, but it's a lesson. And once you once you 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 become free from this, you're going to you're going to flee to God. <laughs> you're going to run closer to God. You will never, ever. And that's the thing. Sometimes it takes being in the dark to know wh where the light is. Right. And um, yeah, the, the spiritual healing and deliverance is needed. And the first step is by confessing. Right. Admitting your wrongs, admitting where you went wrong and correcting yourself, right? That's repentance, adopting a new way of life, doing things differently. That is how you make amends with God. Um, wow, what a heavy reading this was, you guys. I, I, I don't, I want to talk more, but then it's like, I don't know what to really say, right? It was a lot, um, but God bless you. And just, repair your relationship with God. That's what's needed here. Okay. Um, I feel like, do you remember earlier when I did the illustration? I feel like towards the end of the reading, the message was for those of you who took the wrong way. Yeah. Those of you who are in this entrapment, you took the wrong way. You chose the wrong lover. You welcomed the wrong person into your house, into your world into your life. And when you did it, you welcomed a demonic spirit into your life and it's raising hell with you. I feel like, cause remember the reading kind of flow, right? Earlier, the reading was about, uh, you know, you having this pathway that you're on, the devil trying to mislead you. Remember the, the first half of the reading was all about this child of God having several pathways being on the right pathway to, to receive all of these blessings here, but the devil trying to trick them. You remember? That's like, go back, rewatch this reading, especially the very beginning. But then towards the end, a lot started to, be, to become uh, revealed if you took the wrong pathway. 
if you're in this entrapment, you took the wrong pathway. And it's never too late to get back on the right track. The sooner you can do it, the better. Because you don't want any more delays. Okay? It's never too late to kind of cross over, you know? Cross over to the right path. It's never too late. Um, and it may take time, but there's nothing wrong with that. Time is healing. And if you need assistance, just know that I'm here for you as well, okay? We do it through the intercessory uh, prayer work. And if you want to know more about it, I will put the link in the description box. Take care of my beautiful people. I love you guys so much and many blessings to you.